$99, $2300. Both do the same job of converting digital audio from your computer into an analog signal that can be amplified for your headphones or speakers. So what's the big deal about Shit Audio's new Modi 3 Plus digital to analog converter? And what does it have to do with their flagship Yggdrasil? Let's find out. The Modi 3 Plus, like any USB sound card type device, you hook up first, of course, to the outputs to a amplifier of your choice, whether that be a headphone amplifier or speaker amplifier. Then you connect your computer via one of the micro USB ports and then the USB power supply included to the other micro USB port. And if that seems a little odd, well, actually one of the first things you'll notice about the Modi 3 Plus, if you look on the back, there are, as you, as you saw, two micro USB ports. Now, normally you'd have one USB port which would provide power and data from your computer. So your power would come from the computer's power supply. One of the unique and kind of high-end features of the Modi 3 Plus is that this is separated out and they supply a, well, you could call it like a phone charger type USB charger with it, which outputs a five volts, the standard USB voltage and two and a half amps. So why do that? Well, one of the advantage, disadvantages of using a computer as the power source is that computers don't provide a consistent voltage always and maybe not enough current to power devices. So Shit Audio used to have powered USB DACs, but they had issues with reliability and the computer not always being consistent about how it connected up and sent out both power and data, which caused, you know, support headaches. But also there's another feature that's on there. There's, as we saw, there's of course a USB data port on the back. Now, normally you think, oh, okay, it's just a, you just plug it in and go. But we don't ever usually think about what goes on inside the case and why this is a big deal. And that's where the feature that's inside this that is connected with the flagship Yggdrasil deck, which is sitting in the rack behind me, comes into play because Shit audio, well, let's just talk about audio for a moment in general. Normally when you hook up something like this Modi 3 Plus, it, it, other devices have a some kind of USB receiver chip inside. And the USB receiver chip could be made by uh, VIA VIA, who you may be familiar with if you're familiar with computer equipment. Uh, it may be from someone like XMOS, which is very, or XMOS, which is very popular with you know, high-end audiophile converters. And it also may be from C Media, which is what Shit Audio used for a while in many of their devices. Now, the problem with using these things is that you're very reliant on the drivers from one of these manufacturers and the reliability of these things. Often these chips are designed for multimedia, like audio, video, and everything. And while you can get custom drivers, well, you if you know if there's a problem, you have to go back to the, the manufacturer and, uh, talk, and uh, get a bit of driver fixes and other things like that. In the end, due to all the problems they had with USB, Shoot Audio decided to do something unique and designed their own USB implementation. Not a chip, because that would require huge amounts of money in fabrication, but they actually programmed a chip with a software USB implementation, and they call that Unison USB. Now, the advantages of this is much better reliability, and feedback from customers that I've seen, people posting online, have said that it's worked more reliably than devices in the past from Shit Audio that use the C Media chip. The disadvantage is, is that while it works with Mac OS, no problem, Linux, no problem. With Windows, you have to have at least Windows 10 for it to work. So those people who have got some old computer running Windows 7, they want to hook up, well, you're going to be out of luck because there are no drivers for that. But by eliminating these old Windows versions, it solves a lot of problems for them and a lot of problems for the customer. So here's a kind of like high-end feature built in. And you're probably wondering, well, why micro USB ports? Why not USB-C? Because everything is switching to USB-C now. Well, the funny thing is the actual US, the actual physical ports in there, the USB-C ones cost a lot more than the micro USB ones. Now, one of the factors about this is it's $99, only $99. And you might think, well, you know, I can buy a little USB sound card for, you know, like 10 bucks or something. Yeah, you can buy a piece of junk like that. This is not aimed at that kind of person. This is designed to be the most entry level kind of quality di digital to analog converter that you can buy. So $99 was their hard price on this. And they've it, the original $99 Modi was just USB input and USB powered straight off the computer. And this now has, it also has optical input and the Sony Philips digital interface, it's SPDIF. If you have some kind of thing like an old CD player or maybe you have some sound cards which have this connection, 
also the optical one version which is basically an optical version of the SPDIF if you have some devices that use that you can hook those up as well now that's a lot of features for $99 and always when you have an inexpensive product there is always some kind of compromise so something has to be compromised the first is that there's no power switch and the second is there's no funky display and a lot of the cheap DACs I've seen out there you know from China have this kind of OLED display and those things actually are detrimental because they can end up dumping noise into the circuitry and that can degrade the sound because that can often easily leak out into the analog circuits. And it's only a small case. They've only got this space with which to fix any kind of noise or other issues in there. You know, larger DACs, you'll see big power supplies. You'll see a lot of filtering, a lot of isolation, a lot of stuff separated out to reduce the amount of electrical noise going through. And that's one of the reasons you want to separate out the USB is because USB power off a computer can be very noisy. And actually, the, even with these little phone adapters can be noisy too, which is something I'm gonna talk about a little bit in the sound because there's a little bit of a tweak you can do if you want to play around to actually improve this. But it's very relevant. It's something we don't think about because we just, you know, used to plugging stuff in and it works or it doesn't work and that's all we care about. But actually what's inside the case or what's not inside the case is very critical. And so what they, and having things like no display, except nothing except an LED power light and the input selector switch, that keeps the price right down. You've got this stamped aluminium chassis and st well, stamped aluminium and steel chassis, I should say. Basic little feet in here, which are a little bit wobbly. Everything very minimal. The focus is on the technology inside. And Shit Audio spent two years designing their Unison USB for this. So you think, well, if they spent two years, that must have cost a lot of money all the same. But that money is being recouped through the high-end gear. The prioritization of things like USB power quality and the quality of the USB input does bring us into the results of you know doing so and how the Modi 3 Plus performs sonically. And in that, well, you know, I hooked it up to a variety of things. I've got uh, everything from large and expensive flagship headphone amplifiers to, you know, the basic little amplifiers that Shit Audio provides. Now, something else to consider here, although I don't want to overemphasize it too much because it's not as big a deal as the actual, well, the overall implementation of a DAC, but the Modi 3 Plus uses a digital to analog converting chip from AKM in Japan. Now, AKM, if you've recently heard, actually had a big fire and their factory was destroyed, but uh, Shit Audio has a year's supply of them. So there's nothing you particularly worry about if you want to go and buy one of these, they have plenty of stock. That aside, it uses a model called the 4490. Now, if I just said to a lot of people who are audio enthusiasts, oh, it's got a 4490 in there, they're gonna go, uh-huh. But people who have no idea, and I'm sure there are many of you who are watching this who just have no idea what that number means. Well, there are kind of four main DAC chips that you'll see in components from AKM. The 4490, the 4493, the 4497, and the 4499. Now, the latter two are the kind of high-end ones you see in stuff like, I've got another DAC around here, which uses the 4499. And the high-end ones are more expensive, use more power, require you know bigger setups. And actually, shit audios, flagship Sigma Delta deck, the Gungnir, I don't know if I pronounce it right, the one that starts with G with a funny name, that has a 4499 in it. Now those sound kind of very smooth, very kind of clear, but very smooth sound. So some people like them a lot. There's, we won't go into the kind of super fine details here. This is, we're just talking about a $99 component. This uses the 4490. Now this and the 4493 are the kind of the low end ones. You lose a little bit of that smoothness for maybe it's a little bit what I would call a kind of harder edge sound, a little bit less refined than the high end ones. And well, you know, kind of what does that mean? I mean, if you're an enthusiast, that will kind of have some relevance. If you're just looking for something to buy for 99 bucks, I can just say straight out, yeah, just get it, it's good. It's, you're gonna be more caring about the reliability of plugging stuff in and having it work than you are gonna care about whether you can hear the kind of mega fine details of the guy shifting his chair at the back of the studio during the recording, which is one of the crazy things I've heard from a high-end recording. But anyway, that's an aside. In really, if the, the meaning will have more relevance if I compare it to other gear. So for example, Shit Audio has their Modi Multibit, which I've got, in, got sit, sitting on back here, which I've been comparing it to as well. Now it's a $250 DAC because it uses a very expensive industrial chip, actually not designed for audio, but designed for moving motors and that kind of thing. 
If you want, I've actually already done a review on that and you can watch that online as well. I'll chuck a card up in the corner if I remember. That sounds kind of more musical and like the music sounds more real and smoother, even though technically it doesn't measure quite as well. It's kind of more listenable, whereas this is a little bit more kind of the edges on the music are a little bit harder and it's kind of a little bit less perfect sounding. Now, in that, now, a lot of the music I listen to is stuff in the car. It's kind of general, it, huge variety of pop rock and stuff from many, over spanning many decades from, say, the, oh, I don't know, 40s, 50s, 60s, through to stuff that was released recently. And for overall general listening, I was quite impressed in how just good this sounded. I mean, I paired it up with the Magni, the basic $99 amp, and it's the first time I've heard that system going. And in listening with it, I was listening, albeit with headphones that cost 20 times what this system cost, it's, I found it very, very pleasingly listenable. And that's the main thing is that it's it pleasing to listen to uh, as long as you don't sit and kind of compare it to other stuff. I mean, again, it didn't have like the super fine detail you get with a higher end DAC, such as the one sitting around here. But again, for that music I listen to, which is mostly in the car, which is not all perfectly recorded and, you know, that just general casual listening, it was really fine. And that's where a little bit of a tip comes in. So remember we talked about it uses this little kind of phone thing for, you know, for power. You want to use something separate like this. Now, Shit Audio doesn't recommend spending money on tweaking stuff that's this low in price. They recommend save your money for buying something better. But if you're like me, I have a lot of Apple devices around and I have a lot of iPad chargers floating around now. And these things, you may not know, but Apple chargers are actually very low noise and are actually built very, very well. So what you can do if you do have one of these floating around is try swapping it out for the uh, included power supply. And see, it might sound maybe a tiny little bit better. It might just produce a little bit less noise than the, the included power supply. And also, you know, I just for fun, I did try something which had a higher end power supply. Actually, one of the amps I've got sitting behind me has a USB, a very clean USB output for use because it, it goes with a matching player and it helps keep that player charged while using it as a DAC for the amp. And that sound made the sound a little bit what I would call sweeter, a little bit nicer sounding, a little bit less hard edged than what you were using the power, sub, the uh, stock power supply or even the iPad power supply. But again, it's something like if you have one of these iPad power supplies spare, it's kind of worth giving a try. It's one of those kind of audiophile things that you're kind of tweaking the power supply. Because remember, big, bigger DACs, like you see some floating around here, the reason they're bigger is because the power supplies are bigger and the power supplied to the DAC chips is cleaner and the output stage is cleaner. And that's why they sound nicer and you can hear more details and the sound is more pleasant. So that's the Modi 3 Plus, definitely very recommended for me. And I hope that gives you an, an idea what you can get for $99. Before you go, I see a lot of people asking for my advice, what should they buy, what should they get, and you know, worrying about spending money on the wrong kind of thing. If you're interested in that, do consider in exchange helping me out. For the equivalent, as I've always said, for like buying me a coffee once in a while, you can become a member or patron. And in doing so, you help me make these videos because these videos do cost a lot to make. Also, I'll help you give my advice you can literally sign up and i'll give my advice straight away you can ask me as many questions as you as you want and we also have an ongoing chat system where you can see my early impressions of gear you can see videos in advance you can even suggest stuff and help me decide what i'm going to review next and influence that become a member of the community i'll help you out if you help me out do consider doing that and the details about signing up to either become a member or patron are below also sometimes i do make mistakes do check out the description below in case I've added something that I may have slipped up during the video and some other information, links and, and stuff that I could not include. If you're on mobile, there's a little kind of arrow thing you click on down the bottom. Click on that for more information. As always, thanks once again for watching and I hope to see you online.